Good morning and welcome to worship for Sunday the 12th of July. This has been a week of big changes or at least the announcement of big changes with the easing of lockdown in Scotland. Mary Millen was sharing with us that she was able to enjoy a birthday meal in the Rudini in their garden in Lone Head. And no doubt many things like that that we're able to look forward to in the weeks and the months ahead. Things beginning to reopen. And the announcement this last week that churches are going to be able to reopen. It will though take us a bit of time to get that ready. There are some checks that we've got to do, some risk assessments, some arrangements for cleaning, meaning that it's not altogether straightforward. The guidelines for those won't be published in full until later in the week. And because I'm also away on holiday at the end of July, we are going to hold things up a bit. Rather than rush on, we would like to make sure that we are ready and safe. And so it will be Sunday the 16th of August before we return to the church. We will get details about that to you at the start of August. We'll put a newsletter out and also details on the video at that time. There will be restrictions, though, in what we're able to do. We think probably 40 or 50 people. We will need to space the seats out, or at least make sure that some of the seats are not sat on. You'll see in these pictures that the ones with white are the places where people could sit. So we reckon 40 or 50, we probably will put the missing rows back in, just to keep the look of the church. But we do need to make sure the rows are two metres apart and three seats between folk who are not of the same household. There will be no singing. We will be able to use music videos though and we want to try and make it the best experience that we can. We think that's important because we will probably be worshipping in this kind of way for a few months. We will need to look at doing two services on a Sunday and perhaps at making one of those services particularly suited for families. We'll also begin to look at live streaming services. So as you can imagine, a whole lot for us to think about and to plan and to do, but we will continue to have something online as well as in person and we'll continue for a while at least with a phone line. Adaptability seems to be the word of the moment and undoubtedly that is what's being challenged for us. We need to be adaptive and our adaptability is really important. It was also the word for the holiday club this last week and the youngsters were taking some time to look at that, that recognition that life is full of surprises And yet we should thank God for the gift of life, even when it surprises us. One of the activities for the youngsters was making surprise buns, something that have something unexpected in the middle. And here's Lewis and Isaac making their buns and with the finished article that's there. Adaptability. And that is going to be important for us going forward. We will need to adapt and change and we will try and keep you up to date with what is going on. But looking forward to coming back on the 16th of August, even though all of you won't be able to join us that day, it will be a marker for us and able to return and to worship together. Our worship today, though, is going to be opened by Tim Linford. How are you all doing as we come out of lockdown, as we ease ourselves out of the shelter of our homes into the world again? For me, the world can seem a bit of a noisy place. Here in style, the A7 behind the house here is getting noisier. And there's also noise coming from a building site not far from our house. So you may hear a bit of interruption from that. This is why I'm wearing these funny little headphones. They've got a good microphone and it limits some of the background noise. I've been asked today to bring a psalm. I'm going to read 
the first first six verses of Psalm 27 from the NIV version of the Bible. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid when evil people advance against me to devour my flesh? When my enemies and my foes attack me? They will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, and this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle. He will set me high on the rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his tabernacle I will sacrifice with shouts of joy and I will sing and make music to the Lord. It might be a while before we can sing in church again, but things change quickly, so who knows what's round the corner. But for now, let us pray. Faithful God, we lift our hearts to you with thanksgiving. We pause for a moment and think of your saving graces over all of our lives. We thank you for keeping us safe over the last few months. Thank you for the places where we have been able to shelter from the storm of this pandemic. We lift our hearts to you with gratitude and hope. Hope for the nations as we come out of lockdown. Hope that we may be restored. Hope that COVID might not raise its ugly head. We pray for hope for our economy and people's jobs. Protecting Lord, we pray for your safeguarding as we step outdoors again. Keep us safe from all harm. Surround us with your shelter in open spaces. And we ask Lord that you would keep us all safe. In Jesus name. Amen. Last week we began a series looking at people who met with Jesus. And this morning we're going to look at a man who came to Jesus looking for healing. The passage is in Luke chapter 5 and we're going to read from verse 12. Once, Jesus was in a town where there was a man who was suffering from a dreaded skin disease. When he saw Jesus, he threw himself down and begged him, Sir, if you want to, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out and touched him. I do want to, he answered. Be clean. At once the disease left the man. Jesus ordered him, Don't tell anyone, but go straight to the priest and let him examine you. Then to prove to everyone that you are cured, offer the sacrifice as Moses ordered. A remarkable story and a remarkable encounter that this man had with Jesus. A moment that transformed his life. A man who we think probably had leprosy. A dreaded skin disease, a skin disease that is incredibly debilitating, that affects in time the whole body, that begins with dry skin, that begins to break out, but eventually over time begins almost to take over someone's life. It's also highly contagious. And so this man would have had to isolate. Now maybe we've had a taste of isolation over the last few months, but nothing like the isolation that this man would have experienced. 
he was isolating when no one else was, or at least only alongside those who had leprosy like him, with no means of communication, no phone or internet or ways of keeping in touch like we have. And the other thing is that isolation for him was not at home. Those with leprosy would be pushed out of their village and their community and would be on the edge of that. Leprosy in so many ways robbed people, not just of their health, but of their place in their family and their place in society. And it was very rarely reversed. And you sense the pain in this man's voice as he comes, Sir, if you want to, you can make me clean. And as he heard those words from Jesus, I want to, what a relief there must have been in his mind and in his body. And Jesus healing him must have meant the world to him. Not just healed from the skin disease, no more itching, no more scratching. It was much more than that. He was also restored to his family and restored to his community. That's why Jesus told him to go and present himself to the priest because the priest was the one who was to decide whether he would be part of the community again and then he was to offer the sacrifice, a sacrifice of thanksgiving. And you sense therefore in this moment that holistic touch of Jesus on his life. It's not just about the skin disease itself and the itching going. It is about the whole of his life that Jesus cares about and all of that being restored. Restored to the heart of his community. And there is a touch of God very clearly in this moment brought by Jesus. A sign of the coming kingdom and of things that are right. And Jesus' ministry, of course, full of that, full of those moments, full of those times when people were restored, when their well-being was restored, when they could walk again, when their sins were forgiven and that burden they carried, they were released from. And it's a touch that I believe Jesus wants to bring to each of us, healing and wholeness in that holistic sense, healing and wholeness of body, mind and spirit. Jesus wants to bring that into each one of our lives as he reaches out to us. And that's one of the things I love about this story, that detail. The way that Jesus, we're told, reached out and touched him. Didn't just speak, didn't just say something, but reached out and touched him. In a sense, he entered into the world that that man lived in. He didn't hold himself apart. The hand that reaches out to him is not keeping the man away. Although for so much of life that had been his experience, hands telling him to stop, hands telling him to keep his distance, and faces that were turned away. And in Jesus, he encounters something different. Someone whose hand is not held out to keep him at a distance, but a hand held out to touch him and to heal him. Jesus reverses all of what has been there with a hand to touch and eyes that see the pain. Now I believe there's something very powerful in that picture of Jesus reaching out and seeing the pain. Something very powerful for us in that in knowing that Jesus sees what's going on in our lives feels our pain and hurt and enters into that moment with us. And it's important that you know that. And yet, it's not just about how Jesus does that for us. Because the other thing that's important is how we do that for others. 
how we mirror what Jesus did in our lives. Because if we are carrying on the ministry of Jesus as we are asked to do, then we need to make sure that we do what Jesus did in the way that we reach out and touch the lives of those around us. Let's look for ways that we can do that this week. Draw alongside others, even though we are not yet allowed to touch in many situations, that we might be there, that we might see with eyes that care and bring God's touch and God's blessing. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, we thank you for the way you draw alongside and don't hold yourself apart. You reach out to us even today where we are and you touch our lives. Help us to stop in this moment that we might know that. And help us to bring something of your touch to others, especially those who are hurting, who are alone or afraid. May we never hold them at arm's length, but instead be ready to reach out to enter into the place where they are and point them to you. Amen. Our closing praise today is the hymn, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace.